Hello everyone, my name is Miranda and as 2014 is winding down, it is once again that time of year where it is socially acceptable for me to lounge around all day in my pajamas scrolling around on the internet. And as I've been scrolling through my Tumblr queue particularly, I've noticed that I've started to become slightly more than a little obsessed with several OTPs. And I know it's a little oxymoronical to have several one true pairings, but I mean, come on, we all do it. So I thought as a little 2014 wrap up, I'd share my current top 10 OTPs with you. Without further ado, let's get started. Coming in at number 10 is going to be Gwen and Gideon from the Ruby Red Trilogy. Now, I read these books last year and was not, not thrilled with the romance in it. Then, something happened. Ruby Red and Sapphire Blue got turned into movies in Germany, which I can't watch because I don't know German, and there's also no English subtitle version of it. <laughs> I'm not sad. But the stills and the trailers, even though I couldn't understand a single freaking word they were saying, the chemistry between Gwen and Gideon in those, I was like, what is going on? I love this OTP, and I know it's for real because I didn't even enjoy them that much in the books, but now it's making me want to go back and read the books. It'll crash later, but right now I can't stop loving Gwen and Gideon. Number nine is going to be a rather tragic couple, and that is Blue and Gansey from the Raven Boys. If you haven't read Raven Boys, the backstory basically is that Blue, the main character, is destined to kill her true love with a kiss. Which seems fine, because you know it's like, just don't kiss anyone. But then, on a particular day in May, when she goes to help see souls that are going to die in the next year, she sees this kid Gansey, and she's never seen a soul before, and it's because you either kill that person, or that person is your true love. And they're just one of those ones that... Even in all the crazy science of the world, their relationship is just so strong and true. And it's really like the little things that Maggie Streifeder is so good at writing. Like in Lily Blue, Blue Lily, there's a scene where Blue is eating yogurt and then they're all talking around and she just kind of nonchalantly hands yogurt to Gansey to eat the blueberries. And it's just like little stuff like that that really makes me smile. I think it's true OTP stuff, just those little moments and not when everything's zero to 60. I'm so nervous for what's gonna happen in the fourth book. But this OTP really took off for me in the third book, Lily Blue Blue Lily. It was just so many cute moments I can't even. Next up we have Annabeth and Percy from the Percy Jackson series multiple blah blah blah. Now Annabeth and Percy um, this is one of my friggin' favorite OTP troops, so it's no wonder that I'm friggin' obsessed with them. Like, whenever there's, like, a smart old BS girl and a guy who, like, just messes up everything but has, like, those little sarcastic comments and stuff, I get obsessed with it. And Annabeth and Percy are the king and queen of that troop. So for me, this is one of the first OTPs I actually ever had because I read the Percy Jackson series when I was so little. And their relationship in the Heroes of Olympus series has just gotten so much, so much stronger. And they got each other from freaking Tartarus for crying out loud. And I'm not pronouncing that right. But it's just such a good relationship, so strong. And they both kick ass, which I love. The next OTP is Jill and Eddie from the Bloodline series. I am absolutely obsessed with these two. I think it started around the time of Indigo Spell when we learned that Jill had a crush on Eddie, but Eddie was already with Angelique because he gave up Jill, and it's just so romantic-y and angst, and it's literally like a princess falling in love with her guardian and her guardian being in love with her, and Eddie just doesn't think he deserves her, and I could go on and on about this, and I wanna cry just thinking about what happened in Fiery Heart. Can't wait for their reunion scene, for them to like make out and finally get together. Can't get enough of them. I'm literally just so obsessed. Like, they just make me smile, and I just, I want them to have a happy ever after. I really do. Number six is going to be my first OTP from a TV series, and that is a series that I don't even watch anymore. Vampire Diaries, and the ship is Stefan and Caroline, aka Steriline. Now, this is the most recent ship I've gotten obsessed with, but I kid you not, I've gotten obsessed with them. Oh my freaking gosh, it's not even like a Delina situation where they're just so hot together, it's just that they are literally best friends and they're falling in love with each other and it's like the perfect OTP. We really just want them to get together. And I may, dare I say it, have to start watching Vampire Diaries again. That's just, that's how they're making me feel. They're friggin' amazing and they just get my OTP shipper feels going even harder. I love them so much and I can't wait to see where this relationship is gonna go. Next up is a ship that I have gotten a lot of flack for on Tumblr and it is really hard to find people who actually still ship it and it's going to be Caitlyn and Barry from The Flash aka Snowberry which isn't that just the cutest shipper name ever. So the problem with Snowberry is that in the comic books Barry Allen and Iris West get together and on the show Barry Allen is in love with Iris West so it's pretty obvious that he's gonna end up with her. The only thing is I don't like 
the whole OTP thing of Iris and Barry. I'm just over the unrequited love, the girl or the guy not noticing that this person's been in love with them the whole time. But Caitlyn and Barry, I feel like, have so much potential because she puts a lot of her worries and her fears onto him, and they're so different personalities. He's just so fun and energetic and lighthearted, and he doesn't really take things seriously, and she is the complete opposite. She thinks everything is do or die, kind of. But, I mean, that scene where he went and helped her see the portal chamber, whatever, where Ronnie died, it really cemented their relationship for me and the whole hug was just adorable and I really think they can help each other grow. I don't think that they're going to last unfortunately because I think West Allen is going to win out in this situation but I'm going to enjoy my OTP while I can and hopefully they don't completely crush my heart but they probably will because that's just what happens. That's the life of a shipper, right? <laughs> Number four is another ship that is completely breaking my heart, and that is Styles and Lydia from Teen Wolf, aka Stydia. I have shipped Stydia from season one. Like, literally, my friend Jess will tell you the only friggin' reason I watch Teen Wolf is for Stydia. And if you are a Stydia shipper, you know our shipper life is not, not a fun one. Uh, Jeff Davis likes to tease us, Dylan O'Brien likes to tease us, everyone likes to tease us, but I am holding out hope that they will eventually get together, hopefully soon, because I mean this is season 5 people. I really hope they get together, I feel like they have a lot of potential, there's just so many like cry worthy songs that work with them, Say Something is one I was blasting all the time during season 4 because it was just like... So hard, so hard to see Lydia falling apart and I just want to be like, Styles, wake up and like go see that Lydia needs you and go comfort her baby, but like he did it once and I went back to Malia and I was like, oh. So hopefully season five is better, but I am a Stydia shipper for life no matter what happens, so <laughs> pain. Going back to books for number three, I have Mara Dyer and Noah Shaw, aka Madness. Yeah. This whole series in general just took me on an emotional roller coaster, but Mara and Noah's relationship, oh my frack, like, oh my gosh, they have to be the number one couple for me in terms of hotness. Like, I think it's a competition between them and Sydney and Adrian from Bloodlines between who's having more sex because these two just look at each other and they light a room on fire. I love how they're not one of these couples that are like, we're gonna be together forever and ever because they know that their life is dangerous, that they might not have a tomorrow, so they're gonna enjoy today. And I really appreciate that YOLO model of their relationship. That really sums up their relationship. What is madness about? It's about YOLO. Book drop. Mm. Number two is another couple that sets the room on fire just by looking at each other, and that is going to be Oliver and Felicity from Arrow, aka Olicity. This is another ship that will tear your heart 50 ways to Sunday. And just to show you how strong the ship is, I didn't even watch Arrow until on my Tumblr dashboard I kept seeing all these gifts of Oliver and Felicity and all the gifts were sticking out my head, all the scenes. I was like, this couple seems perfection. So I was like, I need to start watching Arrow. Lo and behold, what do I find out? They're not even together. Thank you, Tumblr, for putting me through this pain. I have a feeling that we're going to get some happy moments, but it's probably not going to end happy because this is Arrow and things tend to go really, really good before they get really, really bad. Now I'm scared for what's going to happen after the mid-season finale. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> All right, and now for my number one OTP. Drum roll, please. Dun, 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 dun. Sydney and Adrian from the Bloodline series. <laughs> These two babies, oh my gosh, I could talk about them for four hours straight, probably even more. Sidrian is one of the hottest, best couples ever. They are the ultimate Romeo and Juliet and just makes such an awesome relationship. I love them solving their little mysteries together. I love them helping each other out. And it's not even really the magical stuff, even though they do help each other out with that. It's how she's helping him with his depression, his bipolarness, and he's helping her with her body image problems. And I just really can't wait to see how they wrap up after everything that happened in Fiery Heart. It was like the ultimate thing you could ask for your OTP. I don't want to spoil it, but what you want for your OTP happen in Fiery Heart, and I just can't wait to see where they're gonna go in Ruby Circle. And then also Jill and Eddie. I mean, two of my favorite OTPs in one series. How better can it get than that? All right, so there you have it, my top 10 OTPs of 2014. I'm so excited to see where my OTPs are gonna go in 2015, and since this is the season of sharing, feel free to leave your own top 10 OTPs or your, just your favorite in general down below in the comments so we can discuss them all and girl together and just cry because pain, so, so much pain. So thank you all for watching. I'm Miranda and I will see you next time. Bye guys!